Welcome to an explanation of the Clinical Shift Evaluation Worksheet from the National Registry of Emergency Medical Technicians Paramedic Psychomotor Competency Portfolio Manual. This document will be the document that you provide to preceptors so that your performance at clinical sites may be rated. And here is that form. Now this is in the portfolio manual that is available on the Fundamentals Lab Blackboard site and I'll be making it available on the EMS 215 Blackboard site as well. I highly recommend that you probably have about five of these in a folder with you as you uh, proceed to a clinical site so that you'll be pretty well certain that you're not going to run out of any. So let's go over the, the details of this form and those details are going to be in two sections now this section is the overall this is kind of the meat and potatoes of the form and I'm gonna split this again into two more sections now the problem is as I zoom in further and further the details will begin to wash out a little bit but I do think that it is uh, pretty readable on the next couple of slides here so let's get started on the left side of this. Obviously, you're going to need to write very small. Um, and your student name goes there in the upper left-hand corner. Then the date of uh, your clinical shift. The educational program, you can simply put JCTC. Don't fill in the page blank of blank until you're done. Um, Obviously, by the time your day is done, you'll know how many pages there are. Obviously, you can put the page one of blank, page two of blank as you go through your shift. The time in will be the beginning of your shift, and the time out will be the actual time. And both of these times should be the actual times that you are uh, ready to work at your clinical site. The preceptor obviously should be the name of the person who observes your uh, activities at your clinical site. And um, hopefully this person will be able to come back and rate you for each one of your patient contacts uh, retrospectively. Each contact must be first rated by you uh, and then by the preceptor. So you mark student ratings in the row marked S and preceptors in the row marked P. And we'll see that in more detail here in just a little bit. You need to comment on any discrepancies between the two ratings on the back of the form. We'll show you that here in a moment. And then preceptors complete the shaded sections of the form. And you'll notice uh, if you look closely, and hopefully you have a, a paper copy of the form in front of you right now, that the preceptor box is slightly shaded. And that indicates that the preceptor should complete that section. If you can't read the preceptor's name, after they write it in, I really highly recommend that you make a note of that somewhere on the form, maybe in a margin or something, to rewrite it so we know exactly who your preceptor was. Most of the fill-in-the-blanks here are pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, the patient's age and sex goes in the first column. The impression or differential diagnosis diagnoses uh, will go in the second column. The impression is obviously what you see, what the chief complaint is, uh, or what you believe the chief complaint is. Differential diagnoses might include what you have been able to rule out based on your interview in history. Level of consciousness, complaints, events, and circumstances go in the next box or column. Obviously, you're going to need to write very small, and this is a summation. You'll use your case narrative to uh, give a more detailed accounting of each patient encounter. You'll want to give a summary of the treatments that you rendered successfully. And again, here you can use abbreviations, um, ventilations. You could place, uh, you could um, document BVM, uh, an IV, just IV. Uh, again, you're going to write in more detail in your narrative uh, report rather than on this form. We, we just need to get a, a nice feel for what it was you did so that we can document that and see how many of those kinds of experiences you had. Next is the circle patient contact type. 
And here in a moment, we're going to we're going to go over that in more detail. In fact, I'm going to go back and show you that that's ALS or BLS. Uh, if any advanced, uh, exclusively advanced life support procedure is used with a patient, I highly recommend that you, that you designate it as an ALS patient contact. As you continue across, you, you see Rader, and from here we're going to go to the next slide. So as we go across the top, where you saw your education program in the last slide, the next thing you have is your clinical site, and that would be the hospital or the uh, ambulance service if, if this was being used in an ambulance service. But this would be the hospital, the clinic, whatever it is, uh, the location where you are. The unit or station would be a, a location such as ER, the, the assigned area, ER, OR, um, OB, labor and delivery, things like that. There are the ratings, and those are uh, reflected on your syllabus. So there is really no uh, difference between what you see in your syllabus and what you see here. Also identical are the clinical objectives, which included, which include, and I know this is a little hard to read here, so again, I hope you have a paper copy of the form in front of you. It includes the patient interview and history gathering, physical exam, impression and treatment plan, any skills performed, communication and professional behavior, affective behavior, and team membership. And then the preceptor will and you will place your initials in the correct line. And we'll go back to show you how that works. The rater S is self, P is preceptor, and it can go all the way across. There isn't a line for initials, so I believe they want us to have you have the preceptor initial there for us. If there are significant difficulties with a patient, comments and an immediate plan for improvement for the next contact uh, should go in the far right-hand column. If more uh, space is needed, there's space also provided on the back. So let's show you the whole thing all the way across. And here it is. So this would be one particular patient. So patient one, age, sex, and then go across the page for each significant patient patient contact. Now let's flip the form over real quick and I'm not going to get into a lot of deep I'm not going to get into little detailed pictures here but you'll notice that there's comment for any unsatisfactory rating there's space for that uh, an overall plan for any improvements that you need to make on future shifts you can write in here the preceptor can write in here um, however you uh, however it works out on a particular uh, shift. Now next is an area that is shaded. If you have a paper copy, you should see that. And you'll notice that these areas of evaluation are identical to the ones that were explained in the syllabus, such as being on time, well-groomed, in uniform, prepared to begin. You accept feedback. You're self-motivated, efficient, flexible, careful, confident. If you go back to your syllabus, you'll see that all of these areas are in uh, the grading structure and you receive I believe it's two points for a yes and zero points for a no and we accumulate those as we go if the preceptor requests a follow-up there's a spot there where he can place he or she can place a, a phone number or an email address and we'll be happy to get back to them as soon as we can you'll sign the form there on the left near the middle and the preceptor will sign on the right. Again, you will see that the clinical objectives are exactly what they were in your syllabus. The professional behavior objectives and the team member objectives are also um, identical to your syllabus. I hope this helps uh, in um, understanding how this clinical shift evaluation worksheet should be filled out. Um, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact either Dwayne or myself. Thanks.